In this video, which is part 6 of how to create a custom candlestick chart in ChartJS, we're going to focus on how we can customize the scales here below. These scales here will be fully customized and we create our own plugin to draw exactly the scale we want. Let's start to look how we can do this. So in this part, we're going to focus on fixing the scale here. Right now we have this scale here, but this looks of course not suitable for us because we have here these items and we want to remove them. So what we're going to do is we're going to build our own custom scale for this. So let's start to look at it. So the first thing we're going to do is here, we're going to go down here and we go to the X scale. And within the X scale, we're going to remove all the items. We're going to say here for the grid, we can remove the grid. We're going to say here display false. We don't need basically the grid. In this case, grid here has no value for us. If I save this, you can see here now, the grid lines are all gone. But what I want to move as well is the ticks here. So we're going to say here, below the grid, comma, ticks. Now we're going to say it display equals false. Doing this, and I refresh, you can see here now the ticks are gone, but what happens, the space here below is narrow, and so there would be not enough space to put in new items, or basically new labels. So to do that, or how can we add up space? Well, basically we go here in the options, enter, and I'm going to say layout, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to put a padding and more specifically, we'll put the padding at the bottom and then indicate, let's say a 20 pixel padding that should be more than sufficient. If I save this, pay attention here, if I refresh, you can see here as where my mouse was first and now it jumps up here. So there is now enough space here and we can adjust this by pixels, how many you need. So that's fine. So now what I want to do is I want to draw the lines here. Or sorry, I don't want to draw the lines. I want to put in the uh, labels below here, exactly below our uh, candle stick chart. So how do we do that? So if we're going to scroll down here. I'm going to create a new plugin. And this plugin, will, we will call it our custom scale. And let's copy this, put it up here. I'm going to say here, so let's do a comment, custom scale plugin block. And then we're going to say here, uh, custom scale, oh, sorry, not like that, but I want to say your first constant custom scale equals, and then we're going to say your ID equal custom scale, and then we're going to say here, when would we like to draw this? Well, we can draw this probably after we draw the data sets. So we're going to say here, after data sets draw, although it wouldn't matter so much because the text here would never interfere with the data set. So we're going to say here, data set draw, then we're going to put in the arguments, arcs, and plugin options. The plugin options here, again here, we're going to do a object destructuring. And if you want to understand what object destructuring is, please watch in the description box the, uh, the video for that. So then what we're going to do is, uh, let's see here, equals chart. We're going to grab here some variables. And the ones we will need is the CTX. We want to draw something on the canvas. We want to have the data. And we can have the chart area, although I'm not certain if we're going to use this one. So we can remove it if it's not necessary. Let's see here, the top, bottom, left, right, width, and height. And I don't think we'll be using this one, but just in case. Comma here, then the scales, and the scales, X and Y. So then we have this here. I'm going to say here, ctx.save to save all variables above. And once we have this, we can now start to draw the item. So what I want to do here then is to draw, and we can use here basically our data set here, or this data here as a shorthand. So what I'm going to say here, first of all, ctx dot font. Let's do that first. Then the font will be here specifically, let's make it a bold font, 12 pixels, and then sans serif. And then what I want to do as well is a color. So I'm going to say ctx dot fill style, and I'm going to use here the official uh, color from chart.js, which is a grayish color like this one here. That is RGBA 102, 102, 102, 1. All right. So once we have this, what I want to do more is say here, ctx.fill text. And our fill text here, that will be in parentheses. We're going to put in here the text. Let's say here, hello for now. Then we have here the X and Y coordinates. So doing this here, we need to get the X and Y coordinates. And what is exactly the X and Y coordinates here? Well, it will be based on whatever the date is. And then here, 
and the Y is basically here at the bottom somewhere. So for that, we can probably use here the chart area bottom. I guess we do need this, but that's only this one. So what I'm going to say here, bottom, and then maybe plus 10 pixels more. So we push it a bit more down. And then here the hello, and then for the X value, but what is the value here? Well, what we could do here is very simple. We're going to say here, X dot get pixel for pixel for value. And then here we just grab the date. And what is the date? Well, that's basically this one here, the data dot data sets dot uh, index zero, of course, dot data index zero dot X. If I save that, refresh, there we are. So you might say, well, hold on, we're not really at the center. So let's start to look at how we can put that in the center correctly. Well, what we need to do here is just ctx.text align. And this align will be set to center. By default, it is set on left. And if I do this down center, save, refresh. There we are. And if you look at it, maybe you're not satisfied. It is still too close to the scale. And I want to get a little more uh, pixels down. So we're going to say here, this save. That's maybe better. Or let's make this 20. Save. There we are. All right, so that works. I think that is quite acceptable. So now we have the text here, but of course what I want to have here is the exact date. So let's remove this and then convert this property into a date. To do that, we just have still this item here, or no, sorry, not the, not the entire item, but only this here, because this is the date item. If I put this here, you will see if I save this, refresh, it shows us the milliseconds. So what I can do here, new date then we're going to put this in parentheses once we have that if i save this refresh now it gets the full date including all the additional information i don't want this what i want is i want the date or the day number or not even the date number it's the date so it's like one june so we have day or the one and the june itself so what i'm going to do here is we have this and then what i want to say here dot to to local string and then you can put in here the country that you just use it here just make sure it's like uh, this so in this case I will do the English structure but you might have a different structure in your country use the the shorthand for that one you have to just search what that officially is once you have that what I want to do here I want to say date options this is a constant I'm going to grab this and then I'm going to put in here and I say here in this constant date options and what does this consist of well basically I want to define here the structure and what I want is the day in a numeric value so I'm going to see a day numeric numeric and then make sure that this is a string value comma then next what I want to do is the month and the month I want to define it as short you can do long short anything you want here so uh, numeric there are all options for that and year you can do that as well so that's all up to you. You can use these kind of features in here, which is quite useful. Save this, refresh. All right, so we have one June here. So now what I want to do is I want to loop it through all of those. For that, we're going to go down here and let me just move this one up here. It's just more better. Then I'm going to say here, a we're going to do here a for each. So for every data point, I want to loop through this. So I'm going to say here, uh, let's grab this part. I'm going to grab it till here without the uh, index value here and I say dot for each and what I'm going to do here is for every data point and I'm just going to use the index as well I'm not sure we're going to use the index but if we just have it there for in case if not we can always remove it so that's not a problem then I have this here uh, the callback functionality or the arrow function expression or arrow expression function cut out this put it in there proper indentation and then I'm going to change this so we remember this is the shorthand for this structure here which is basically this point here but this one here loops to every individual data and that's why for each is quite useful so I'm going to put in here data point dot x that's the only thing I need to do now same here data point dot x save refresh there we are June 1 2 3 4 5 and then we have here 8 and you can see here you don't see any other value between there absolutely phenomenal and this is basically the way to do this so now we have this done what i do believe that we should have here is a proper 
tooltip. I don't like the tooltip we have now because it doesn't show the information. So what I'm going to do is, next video, we're going to focus on customizing the tooltip and eventually maybe a crosshair or something would be very nice as well for this chart.